We welcome back to Copperhead Customs. Welcome back to a new episode on our 39 Bedford. As I say, if you're new to the channel, go down and check it out. What we've been doing, we're building this thing for five grand. All right, now I put the car over here a few weeks ago to start building it and I didn't really think about it though, did I? Because it is in a shocking place for me to film. <laughs> so, anyway, today. On this episode, what the plan is, I think we're going to jump in this interior. I think we're going to get those seats out. We've got a piece of metal to look at getting in the back there. So we might have a look at that. We've got our handbrake to work out. We've got to get all these out at the front here, the signs out, both sides, so that we can uh, cut in to mount our pedal. So we're going to look at that. Um, now, one thing we're going to look at is, with our pedals, or pedal, is I bought the Wilwood pedal, which needs some bracketry made if we run that. And I was just having a think. I'm going to go grab a pedal out of a Suzuki Swift, and that's a Suzuki Swift brake booster and we might just see how long it is because I didn't like it because it was so big but all the pedals are huge they're all too big so I don't, I'm not happy with any of the pedals that I can find or anything so what we're going to do is we'll go nick a swift one and see what that looks like I did have one somewhere but I've lost it so we'll go grab one out of them out of there and we'll see how that looks and then we're gonna we might look at trying to get this brake pedal mounted I think we're gonna have to I think we're going to have to chop in here a little bit and make some and then make some bracketry and then rebox it all in. So yeah, the signs all come out because the signs are going to get redone. We're probably going to have to maybe pull the steering column out quickly. So yeah, I think we're going to look at doing the pedal. I think we're going to look at doing the piece of metal in the back, the handbrake. These are the jobs. These are the jobs I'd like to try to look at anyway. We've got the other side floor as well. I don't know if we'll get, I don't know how much of this we'll get done in this episode, but we've got the other side floor has to be all drilled and mount, bolted down. We've got the center console sitting out there on the table with our B&M shifter. We've got to look at doing that, getting that prepared. We've got to look at getting the back welded in, the handbrake thing mounted, this done. So we're not going to get all this in this episode, but we're going to start, right? And we're going to do this back mount. All right, so I had someone come around the other day because this back mount's been challenging me of how to make the back mount and how to make it look legit, like, like it come out with it. And I haven't been able to actually work out how to do it. You know, I could do it out of, out of tubing, like a race car type, how you do it in a race car. Or I could do it out of square or whatever, but it all looked didn't suit the factory. I want it to look like it's coming with the factory. But what I've come up with doing is I'm going to make the mount for the tray. So I'm going to make a mount that picks up the tray. So it looks like the tray mount, but then off of that mount, so we're going to make it strong, but then off of that mount, I'm going to pick up that body mount. So when you're looking at it, the mount, it just looks like it's the tray's mount and it doesn't matter that it's, does that make sense? So I was just thinking I'm making, I was going to pick them both up, but I was making the mount for the body mount and then I was going to get the tray off of that. Whereas now I've rethought about it. I thought, well, if I do it the other way around, make the mount look like it's for the tray and then pick up the body mount off of that, then it doesn't have to look it could just be made out of probably square tube. Ch -ch -ch. All right, so that's where I'm thinking with that. I've seen another one done, and they actually chopped this out, but yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not chopping that out. Because I could have chopped that out probably and moved that forward, and it would have worked. But yeah, we're not going to do that. So we're going to have a little look at that mount. We probably won't, we won't, we definitely won't make that in this. But that mount will also, this is what it's going to do. It's going to go. From over there, so I was going to put my mount in under the cab, All right? But now I've decided I'm going to put the mount 
outside the cab and we're going to pick up so we're going to come off there and we're going to come up and pick up here and come across pick up pick up and then go back down and then we'll have a leg that comes off of it type thing that picks up that body mount then what we also have to do is our handbrake's in here somewhere probably right next to where that body mount is and so we're going to this mount that picks up the body mount will also pick up the pick up the handbrake to mount the hand bolt the handbrake down that's my plan so the one mount is going to do all three things yeah so we're going to design that anyway design that so we can knock that up during the week that probably won't be in this video but i may look at it all right but that's all part of the floor see we've got a little floor to put in the back in on the inside in there and it all has to be thought about when I put my floor in, because I have to leave a little hole for the handbrake thing. So as you can see, we got the in there. Well, this part, no, that's our center console. But that little piece in there, we've got to make something there. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of metal out of like a, a bonnet or a roof or something off a Swift. And I'm going to, this is what I'm thinking. And I'm just going to, um, I don't know. We'll see. I'm probably going to have it come across and a little fold up on it if that makes sense and we'll put like holes in it and we'll spot weld it on i don't know if that made any sense or not but yeah they're the things we're going to look at i think who knows what we will achieve probably none of it because that's how it works we've also we're going to have to start looking at this motor getting this motor to fire up so that's something else i need to look at think about is i've ordered a little um like a little fuel tank that will hang up here even though i probably honestly i probably could have hooked the real tank up now couldn't i because we've yeah didn't think of that but anyway we'll be able to use this little tank i bought on other projects it's going to be a little uh it's going to be a little starter tank you know for when we buy these things and they have rusted tanks or whatever so i needed it anyway so we need to look at that then i need to work out how to wire this up temporarily just to get it to fire so we can get this motor to run so we need to look at that getting this motor fired up fingers crossed it's all good <laughs> anyway and that's a bit of rabbit in to start with so we'll see what we do first let's suck into it i'll see if i can find somewhere decent to put you and uh all right, we're getting there slowly, guys. We're getting there. The bar, the, the, the back's nearly done. We're, we're actually can start here. We'll keep, we'll keep rabbiting because it's been good fun so far, hasn't it? Right. <laughs> anyway, what we can start doing is the back back here is pretty much done. We've got to wire the lights. That's all we've got to do at the back, right? So we can pretty much start mounting our wooden tray at the very back. We can mount a bit of the tray, you know? Uh, we've still got to get into the diff here. We've got to do those two brake lines. Once those two brake lines are done, the only thing we have to do in the back is adjust the pads. So then we're done to here. The fuel tank's nearly done. So once we connect, we've got to find a different hose for this. And obviously, we've got two different sizes there. So we're going to have to work something out, whether I do a, put a reducer in or I was thinking, you can see there, but... This piece here, which reduced down to that size. Well, I think that size there, it's very similar to that size there. So I reckon if I chop this, we'll get the bigger hose and either lop it or just shove the hose up further, we can make that work. I think if I chop this and then put the hose up here, that will actually help me be able to nearly pull that off with a nice curve. So. We've got to try to find a hose. I don't know if I've got one or not. We need to look at this hose. Do the same on this, I think. We'll chop this back a little bit, maybe, because this hose has to go up to there. So we've got those two to do. We've got to find a bit of hose from this one that has to go onto that one down there. So that's like our return, I think. So we need a little piece of hose for that, and then we need just a little piece of hose here. So we need to like see if I can find some hoses kicking around. So that's something else on the list. And once that's done, we've got a handbrake cable, which can be done at a later date. And 
some wiring under here. So pretty much once this is done and those brake lines are done, we can then look at bolting down and that and of course the, the mount, the tracking will be bolted back down properly. Finalised. Done. Good. Whoosh. Bang. Something finished. Finally. Woo woo. So that's sort of where we're working at the moment. We're kind of we're kind of working from the back forward a bit, but we just do whatever I feel like doing on the day, yeah? So I don't know. This is the good thing when you you can just pick whatever you feel like doing. If you feel like doing anything. So we've still got we've got lights to do. We've still got to get our headlights to work. Now these are old. Now this is something this is something else you didn't know. Is see these old see those old globes in there? Can you see those? Well I bought an auction lot a while back. And it had it was an antique auction lot, it had old car parts. It was actually movie props from one of the movies they had down the Gold Coast. Uh, I'm not sure which one it was. It wasn't the Elvis one, it was one before that. But anyway, it was set in the olden days. And I got all these all these movie props. So I've got big big old antique lights and I've got nose cones off cars and bonnets and there was all sorts of stuff. Boxes of spark plugs and um Oh, there was all sorts of stuff. Now I took a punt on it because you didn't, you couldn't see it, and all the boxes. I just thought maybe they're just boxes. They might not have anything in them, but whatever. Um, there was oil bottles. There, was, you name it, it was in there, right? So I put, I bought it anyway. Took the punt, and well, it was a, <laughs> it was a rip up bar. I tell you, because it had. Three nose cones, five bonnets. It had it had uh, probably three thousand dollars worth of the parts in it. The oil bottles were in a in a contained thing like the servo. They were ridgy didge ones, old school, not repos. Um, all the spark plugs boxes were full of not like old, 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 old vintage brand new spark plugs. There was so anyway. What I'm rabbiting on about is there's a brand new box full, I'm pretty sure, of those globes. So now the thing we ought to make sure is uh, 6 or 12 volt or whatever, we've got to work that out. But they're those stupid looking bulbs anyway. So um, I'll pull that out one day. I'm going to actually probably stick it over there. Uh, all this stuff, some of this stuff. But anyway... So what it was was the movie props. They they were actually legit antiques that the movie studio had gone and bought all these legit antiques and put them in their movie. And then when the movie's finished, they just flog them off at auction. And I took the punt on them, and luckily they were legit antiques. So in in this in this uh, three pallets, I think I bought three pallets full for like two hundred dollars. And there's about a nine thousand dollars worth of stuff in it. <laughs> anyway, there's some rabbiting. So I don't know. We just have to do something, don't we? Otherwise, we'd never finish it. So anyway, let's get going. We're getting to the point where the tricky stuff's going to happen, which is the wiring. I don't really like wiring. I hate to tell you the truth. I hate wiring. Um, hate it, hate it. I actually, my very, the first apprenticeship I did when I left school, so yeah, I have a few trades, there's something you don't know. First apprenticeship I did when I left school was as an electrician. And I don't know, I finished that, and I hated it that much that I've never done it again. Not one, ever. See that? Weird sound then. Anyway, <laughs> so yes, I was an electrician and I hate it. But car electrical is a bit different than household electrical. But uh, I absolutely hate doing electrical work. All right. So I'm going to have to try to get my head around that and, and do that. All right. So anyway, that's coming up. We're not looking forward to that. Motor's got to get started. We're actually getting there, guys. We're nearly there. 
seriously. Uh, if I pull my finger out and actually do some work, we'll have, we'll have it done. I'll have it done in three or four weeks. It's just whether I, you know, how much I work. All right, that's 14 minutes of me talking crap. So we'll see how much of that I cut out and we will get something done. Reaper. Welcome back. Here we are again. Right, so we lost all of yesterday's footage. Bing! Yes, that's right. I did a stupid, I pressed the wrong button on the computer and I accidentally erased it. So that was very, very stupados on my behalf. So we'll just do a quick catch up. This So this video, you're probably not going to get to see much working, but you'll deal with that. So we'll do a catch up of what I actually achieved. So I've got the seats out two seats out from here oh, actually this piece of wood here is on the bench there the other half because I accidentally I don't know I just sort of touched it and it broke so we're gonna have to do something with that either replace that or repair it we could do one of my little repairs like we did on on this piece though which actually looks pretty cool so we may just do another one of those little repair jobs uh, we removed all the signs from the floor. We actually uh, cut out the proper floor. There's a piece of it here I wasn't actually overly happy with. I don't know what I was doing when I did that. <clears throat> so we're going to redo that. Um, we had the steering column out. As you can see here, we've got the wheelwood pedal. It's just clamped on there. Um... But then I stopped on that because I wasn't real sure if I was overly impressed with it. Uh, what we're going to do today, as you can see, I'm all dressed up, or not dressed up, but I'm in my, not in work clothes, am I? I actually look freaking half decent for once. So what we're going to do today is I have found a huge collection of brake pedals and clutch and accelerator pedals to suit an old Holden. So I'm going to go and purchase them. They're quite cheap. And we're going to... I think we're going to change it up. I think we're going to put... Yeah, I know. I think we're going to put a different pedal in it. Okay? So, um... Yeah, we've got to go get them and then see where we go. And then, if you look in here... Oh, hell's broken loose in here because... That's right. I had a little attempt at starting it. So... We... To be honest, I nearly burnt the shed down. <laughs> yeah, I had a bit of a fret. Well, I think so. So I came in. Um, so what we did is I attempted to start the motor. Okay, um, we didn't get it to we didn't get it to fire up because there's a few little issues in there. But it did. The motor sounded healthy, cranking, and it did have a little whoosh, like it was about to go. Uh, so I'll run you through what I did in a second, but I came back in last night because I had to do a little plumbing job and uh, we had a little water leak and I came down to the shed and I smelt something funky in here, um, like uh, plastic burning and I looked, there was all smoke coming out of the coil and it was all bubbling and smoking and, and what I'd done is I'd left, I'd left the wires connected so I actually had, it was like leaving your ignition on kind of thing. Um, and I'm not sure, but I think maybe it's a 9 volt coil. And I was running direct 12 volts to it uh, and then left the ignition on. So, yeah, apparently from what I'm reading up is basically the coil popped and it was frying itself up. So uh, luckily it came in and caught that. Okay. Well, you're back. Uh, 
it's all going wrong. So the phone just went, uh, the camera just went flat. So I've gone to grab my phone to finish this one off. So I was explaining about the video, uh, the motor, right? So, uh, it's truth. This is what happened. Uh, to start off with, we hooked up our our red main cable here to our starter motor, which is actually long enough to take us to where our batteries are going to be. Um, we haven't run it properly because I wanted the, the battery out here for testing. So we've run that. We ran the our negative that goes from our battery. We ran that to our starter as well. I put it on the starter bolt because so now uh, we need to have a negative, a ground going to the motor. So that's where I'm going to earth that out. It's I found that a good way is if you take it to the starter, then you don't get issues with grounding out of your starter later. Now also what we will do is down at the battery, we will run a ground straight to the chassis. Okay, we'll weld a little, probably weld a little bolt on there, stick our ground on, do a nut up, right? So then that's how we're going to do that later on. So then we ran a, this one here, which is our signal wire to our starter. And this we, is, is, is basically our ignition switch, this was. So this was what we touched onto the battery to, to crank it. So that's what we did first. And we got the starter motor firing up. All well and good. The motor sounded really nice. You could hear the compression in it. Be pa pa, yeah? <clears throat> then the next step was, okay, now let's wire up, get some power going to the coil. So we ran a 12 volt wire directly to the hot side of the coil. As you can see, the coil's not there because we'll talk about that in a minute. So we ran one to there. Now, I don't know if I did this right, but then we took this wire from the dizzy here. This little wire that comes out of the distributor, this little black sucker, and we put that to the other side of the coil. Now, I think I did that right. I could be wrong, but I think I did that right. The only issue I did was, I'm pretty sure the coil might have been a nine volt coil. It's meant to have a ballast resistor in it. I'm pretty sure it's meant to have, it's either to have a resistive wire or a ballast resistor before the coil. I mean, we just ran direct 12 volts to the coil, which isn't really a problem to do a quick start up. But stupid over here, walked off inside for four hours and left that connected. So what, what's gone and happened? Well, I've come back in the shed later on, luckily, and I could smell electrical burning, and I've come in here and there was all smoke woofing up out of here, there was all bubble and bling and stuff going on with my coil, the wires were red hot, so I don't know how far that would have gone, whether that would have caught fire and burned us down, but I reckon it might have, so very, very, very lucky boy yesterday, but anyway, so yes, we ran the power to the coil, pulled a plug, pulled a number one plug out, sat it over here, spark, alright, so now we've got, we're cranking over, sounds nice, we've got spark, so we hooked up the fuel side. Uh, this is where it all sort of went wrong. Uh, the fuel pump was pumping, well, so we got we primed, sort of primed it a little bit. We uh, got fuel pumping up. I got it squirting out the carby, all good. We we were springing a hardcore leak out of our fuel pump. I'm pretty sure it's just the little the little fitting down there. Actually, you're probably a bit far zoomed out, eh? All right, so I'm pretty sure it was just out of this little fitting. So I don't think that's an issue, but I do have uh, two more of them. So we'll have fuel right there. But then on our carby, our carby just poured fuel. Well, this isn't set up correctly, of course. Just poured fuel out the bottom. So I'd say the needle and seat is stuck, is what I'm hoping. So I've ordered a rebuild kit for the carby to rebuild it. So that will be its own little video. But we, what we're going to attempt, but this one will probably be stuck because it's pretty standard with these Strongbergs, at least they stick up. Is this is the original carby that came with the uh, with our new motor and this piece here was broken well this one here is the same so I'd say this one would definitely be gunked up this one but we'll take the base plate I think off of it stick it on that one and we'll have a look but I'll 99% say this will have the exact same issue and it will need a rebuild as well so anyway we've ordered a little rebuild kit for the carby which I've never done so this <laughs> be very interesting that so that's what we're going to do there i've ordered a bit of stuff last night so yes but the motor was cranking over and it actually made a couple of little pops like it was about to fire up 
I just didn't have enough fuel in it. It got enough fuel to give it a whoo, like it was gonna go uh, at the start. And then I, I don't know, then I actually think I might have fried that coil. So um, if anyone knows anything about any of this stuff, this the electrical side of these, I do not know, okay, about this stuff. So from what I'm seeing, like I said, I think there should have been a resistor before the coil, whether I've fried the coil by sending direct 12 volts to it, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure, but I think we fried the coil, that's why I couldn't actually get it to fire up in the end. Um, I didn't recheck the spark, but I had that much fuel pouring out of that carby, I was just like, nah, this is dangerous, if this thing does fire, there's a fair chance it's going to it's gonna catch fire, not just fire. So, uh, I, held, I stopped on that, and that's basically all I've done. So now what I have gone and done is, uh, the other thing I did is I ran a just a loop line down there on the transmission for the transmission lines. Because um, I didn't actually want to mount the trans cooler permanently yet in case we've got to pull this radiator off and on. So I didn't want to be stuffing around with that. Uh, so to that, now, the pedals, like I said earlier, hopefully that footage comes through. Um, maybe we won't even bother with that footage, eh? Well, no, we'll put it in. So hopefully, yeah, you'll see that. So the pedals, we're going to get new pedals again today, and we'll see if I like the idea of the new... This new style thing can come up something a bit better with the pedals we're going to get today. I've also ordered... I've ordered... ordered I think I've ordered every single thing now last night. Um, what did I order? I ordered the Carby Rebuild Kit. I don't even know what I ordered now. What did I order? Um... I don't know what I did. Uh, I think uh, uh, a wiring kit. I think I ordered a wiring kit and like just a base uh, 12 circuit little wiring loom kit thing. Um, today, as you can see, I'm looking all right. Today, we are going to go and get some hosing. I need a couple of hoses for here. I need a new trans hose. Uh, What else did I order? I ordered a heap of stuff last night. I can't remember what it was. I think I've got everything. I've nearly got everything now. Anyway, so we're going to go get these pedals today. We're going to get some hosing. And I really can't remember what I got. What is wrong with my head lately? Seriously. So these are the things that we don't have. Accelerator cable. We haven't looked at. Um... Handbrake cable, we haven't looked at. Choke cable, we haven't looked at. Other than those few things, I, th I, think, we're, I think we're there. Uh, I really think we're there. So yeah, I ordered the, I don't know, I'll have to go look on the computer what I got, but I got, oh, I got some brake fittings somewhere. Pretty sure the Bross brought them down last night. So I got some of those brake fittings so I can do those brake lines. Um, I don't know where they've gone, but yeah, we'll get onto that, so we can do them, um, it's really annoying me that I can't remember what else I bought yesterday, oh, that's what we bought, so we bought a new coil, here we go, we bought a new coil, uh, to replace this one, we bought the ballast resistor, so if anyone knows any about all this side of it, like this is a, see, I don't know any mechanic, I don't have any friends, right, so, that's by choice, pretty much, but a decent mechanic would be able to tell me this in five seconds. I'm pretty sure the wiring has to go through the ballast resistor before it hits the coil, and then I'm pretty sure out of the coil is just this wire here, is the out of the coil. I'm pretty sure, I should, I'm pretty sure that's right, but anyway, so we've ordered that ballast resistor, we've ordered a new coil, then I also ordered a full electronic dizzy set, that's separate, whether we put that in to start with or not. We ordered the Carby rebuild kit, and there was something else, I think. But anyway, so the plan now is today I'm going to go get some more stuff. Then we're going to try to get back onto these pedals and work out how they're going to, how we're going to mount these pedals. We're probably just going to have to rip that wheelwood pedal out and resell it. or we'll put it away for later. Um, I think that's where we're sort of headed, guys. Uh, yeah, we'll do the pedals, then we can come back in here and we will redo the flooring. Whether I put that other one in or make a new one, we'll put the floor in there. 
center console. I've seen some footage. If you look in some of the earlier videos, you will see where I have that gray Suzuki Swift console in it. And I've seen some footage and didn't mind it. So drop your comments on what you thought of that gray Suzuki Swift center console put in it with the B&M shifter mounted through it. So yeah, I think I threw it out, but I've got another one I'll chop up. So I'm humming and hurrying about that. So that's, we've got to do the center console. We've got to weld that floor in, mount the handbrake. So we've got heaps to do, but we're actually getting somewhere. Now, auto electricians. I need help here. Come on, how hard? I don't expect you to come and do the work. I just need someone to send me a proper wiring diagram. Send me a diagram on how to do this. I, I don't want a wiring diagram on a Holden or on a Bedford or on a... I want a specifically hand-drawn diagram on this, right? By someone, if someone can help me with it, right? So we don't, we're not running a lot. We're running headlights. We're running indicators. We're running taillights and, and we'll, we'll have a... You know, we're running all of that malarkey in the back. We're pretty basic. Headlights, indicators, that's basically it. There's a, I think there's a, we can put a, a brake light switch, you know, we, there's a few of those things we can do, but we, honestly, I don't really care about any of it, guys. All I want is push button start, a ignition switch, we're going to have the window winders, headlights, indicators, brake lights. I think that's basically me. Oh, maybe we'll light up some gauges, but yeah, if we can get some warning lights, maybe. But I don't, like I said, I don't even really care about that at this stage. Uh, so if someone can send me out a diagram of how to do that, we very much appreciate it. And then we've got to wire the motor up too. So if someone can can uh, chop me out on that. A little diagram of how to do that. it would be very, very appreciated. Right, so we've got our little brake fittings. So whether they come in this, whether I do this tonight, in this video or not, we'll see how long we're going. I might quickly uh, knock these lines out when I get home and, and throw that in. We'll see uh, see how we go. But, so we did do some work. But as always, with these builds, it's, like I've seen a few people say, it is one step forward and two steps back, all right? So that's sort of what happens. And I was actually pulled my little poo pants up a little bit yesterday and well, the day before about having to pull all that floor out because... I'm pulling all the stuff apart that I finished. So, you know, sort of pulled my pants up and went and put my lip in, you know. The birds were coming past and pooping and hit me in the lip because it was sticking out so far. And... <laughs> so anyway, I eventually put my man pants on and come out here and did some work, all right? So I think that's where we're at. You missed the footage, right? They'll deal with it. They'll be allowed a lot more. Um... So we're making the progress. Uh, yeah. The plan also is this. We're going to take old Chief out of the shed. I think we're going to bring the 1940 in. And I'm going to start tinkering on the 1940. And I think old Chief can just sit out there under the carport there. Hopefully he doesn't get his poop pants on because I actually can't use it because it's stuck in here and I've got all this stuff that doesn't drive in the way of it. So, yeah, Chief's going to come out. So we can go and take it for a spin. I think we'll put the 40, 1940 in here, which I think is a tiny bit shorter than that. So we'll bring that in and we'll set it up so I can work on it. And we'll get that thing off the ground and we'll start looking at uh, slowly piecing that back together as well. So there's more. You actually get some more cool stuff happening in here. Uh, so we're going to do that in the next few days. Um, we've still got so much to do on this. Not only to do... But our main goal at the moment is running and brakes. Like uh, like I've said, some of this stuff may not hit the car just yet, all right? Um, and it won't be put in the pricings. So at this stage, I don't think I'm going to do the bushes in the front end or any or the ball joints or any of that malarkey just yet. I think I'm just going to get the brakes done. We're going to get the brakes done. We're going to get it fully mounted, the cab mounted, the tray done. The motor running, we're going to get it driving down the street, the wiring done. So we're just going to get this into a running, driving car down the street first. We'll make budget, we'll be all happy, everyone will be happy, we'll do our little...
and then later at a later date we'll do some little videos we'll probably do a more of a how-to less of an entertaining more of a how-to video on uh what are these ones they're the front wheel bearings we'll probably do the front wheel bearings but we'll do the rear uh, uh, rear wheel bearings boom how-to video we'll do a uh control arm bushes how-to yeah i'm not looking forward to that so that's what we'll do at a later date at this stage we just got to get this thing running, make budget, driving down the street, and then we'll look at it later. All right, so that's the plan. We'll go and and uh, yeah, tell us what you think. This isn't the uh, this hasn't been like yeah, it's a bit of a rabbit video. This one just me talking malarkey, but you can see we're making progress. We're getting there, and. Uh, I still think it's going to be one of the baddest cars going around. And it's only going to cost us five grand. Huh? So anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time I'm looking at you. Reaper.